What's up, y'all? This is Live Dogs. We weren't here last week because Lukey was in Baltimore with his mom. Um, yeah, and I kept running into my buddies with my mom. It was tight. And I'm here with Mark, who totally wasn't in Baltimore. Yeah, I was back here in, uh, you know, in Los Angeles dealing with a bunch of bullshit. But nothing nothing tragic. Just, uh, you know, some motherfuckers don't know how to act. But besides that, everything's good, man. And um, since you couldn't come on last week... Um, let's give you three minutes to party on Manny Pacquiao since, uh, you didn't get your chance to party. Um, while I was watching the fight, um, me and my brother were on the phone the whole time and I couldn't really call it while I was watching it. Um, as far as like a winner or a loser. Uh, and then when I watched it, and I watched it a couple more times. I had I had Smith I mean not Smith I had Horn I think both times barely um so I don't know man the whole like even while I was watching the fight even though I, live I mean not live but while it was happening I did think that maybe Manny might have been edging it but I just came away with it you know he was finished and it, you know what I mean it didn't it didn't matter to me the outcome I don't I can't see him beating anyone so I didn't really the outcome to me didn't mean anything to me his his fate was sealed either way Obviously, a win probably would have like forced him into another big fight to get to get beat by somebody at the top of the division. But I mean, I would have to think probably for Pacquiao, it's a good thing to, that he lost to be able to rematch this guy. Yeah, I mean, um, that was a really reserved party time. That's pretty much how I saw it. I don't know if you heard my thoughts, but um, I'll just summarize it just for you and the listeners. I basically thought Pacquiao looked slow and old. I thought Horn pushed the action, and a lot of people kind of dumbed down the fact that he... And I'm not Mr. Push the Action and give people points for pushing the action, but there were literal rounds where there were like nine punches that landed. Right. And when stuff like... When nothing's really landing... And I'm not... I hate CompuBox because I've never seen a fight, really, where I've felt like... CompuBox did an adequate representation of punches landed, you know, because who's to say a punch on Manny Pacquiao's elbow doesn't affect him? And isn't that, shouldn't that be counted as a clean punch? You know what I mean? It was just, right, you got right. all this silly, oh, they got two guys hit touching Atari remotes. One's count, they count the missed punches and the landed punch. Yeah. People look at these numbers and act like it's this unquestionable number. And I've sat, you've sat down close enough where you can, if you figure out where the compu box guy, they're just sitting in a seat near press row that has a sticker on a table that says so and so's name compu box, and they give them literally an Atari joystick, and they push the button every time that they see a punch land. That's how scientific it is. And yeah, I mean, I think I it's useful at, to a certain extent, but I don't. I it 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 doesn't it can't always be. It's useful Combo as box like is... a gauge. It's like useful to be like, wow, um, someone threw a thousand punches or they're throwing a hundred right. punches this right. round or he's landing a lot of clean punches. It's good at general um, averages. But to be like Manny Pacquiao landed 10 more power punches than Jeff Horn, that 10, that's too close of a number for me. You get what I'm and... saying? CompuBox is usually a tool that people use uh, at their convenience. When when it's the guy who they think won the fight, then you know look at the CompuBox numbers. But when all these guys, you know, when they when they have a different opinion of the fight, then it, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? I've seen I've been in arguments on social media with a lot of people that have said fuck CompuBox, and then all of a sudden after the Pacquiao fight, they were you know banging the, the CompuBox drum about look at the numbers now. So really. And again, you got to keep it in, you know, it's 12 fights inside a fight. You got to score it that way. And it's it's difficult just at the end to say he landed, you know what I mean? This guy landed more punches. He, he won. I can understand why some people thought Pacquiao won the fight, but it, it, I don't, it can't just be based on that compu box. Like, if you thought he won not, more rounds, then he won more rounds. It's not a robbery. Neither guy, if this, this, you'll understand what I'm saying. Neither guy really won the fight, if you get what I'm saying. No one, like, went out and took the fight from the other person. It was yeah, a fight I think with a lot of swing rounds. Another thing, Lukey, people asking for a 10-8 in the ninth is absurd. That Not was a, a, just a normal-ass dominant round. I mean, 
again, if people are going to say like, oh, you're crazy and you, I'm, or all you do is ride is not Floyd beat the shit out of Gotti way worse than that in every single round. And I don't believe he got any 10, eight rounds in the fight. I, I went back and looked there. Might, there may have been one. I don't remember. I could be wrong. I might have not been reading the wrong article, but I don't think Floyd was getting 10, eights every round. And it was a lot more savage beatings in that fight every and people weren't screaming for 10, eights. Well, I think that unless someone's like out, out on the like, ropes yeah. or really badly hurt, it's a 10-9. Because in boxing, see, in MMA, it's different. People people have got the game messed up because of MMA. You can't score boxing like MMA, okay? Because boxing, it says you got to touch your glove to the ground. That's a 10-8. And then right. I'll make a modern remix to it where you're basically about to go down but you're either too tough to go down and the ref's not stepping in and the belt Or the ropes are holding you. Or the rope is holding you. But if it's not those things, that's just an old-fashioned 10-9 that's called dominant. And that's just where I'm coming from. Yeah, I, I very rarely ever give those away for, unless it's that, you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck are you doing, ref? This is over. Or, like, he's he's just got lucky and got into a position where he's against the ropes, and that's what's holding him up. Like James I thought that Kirkland, was... um, Glenn Tapia. The round before Kirkland stopped Tapia, debatably, you could call that a 10-8. Sure. Do you sure. get what I'm saying? Like, it's like yeah. one where the guy goes to the corner and he's falling asleep on the stool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like right. that's, that's what a 10-8 round looks like if you don't drop someone. He went back to his corner, and his coaches are waking him. They're shaking him and going... Hey man, you got to wake up. We're going to throw you back out there, right? And I, I didn't understand to be honest. The referee coming over and asking, I that was really I didn't get because he was tired. It looked like Jeff Horn was tired. Pacquiao was putting punches together, and the referee to me, they're like, "Hey guy, you got to start throwing punches back because this guy's punching." Right, but but as soon as he says no, I'm okay. Like he was still trying to say like, "No, no, no, I'm sorry, no." I didn't think it was anywhere near that point, and it would have, I thought it would have been a dreadful stoppage at that point. I think also it was one of those things where it's um, – I hate to make it seem – well, it's the real. I, who cares? I'm on, I'm on the side of righteousness on this one. I think the ref thought they're going to make a documentary about this one day. He wanted a cinematic moment. He saw a moment where it was like stuff was happening and all this stuff, and he kind of – threw himself in the mix of the story of this fight, you know, where he was I like, thought, sorry to interrupt, Luke, but the referee kind of maybe was feeling like, hey, man, you've done so good to this point. Let, let me just stop it here so you don't, they don't, you don't get flattened. And you know what I mean? Just, just kind of, you won already. So just stop in, I just, in the eyes of people or whatever. I just felt like it was more like he did in there. He felt like Horn needed to throw a little bit more. And Horn looked tired, he looked gassed out. But I think it was also kind of like sometimes these people go on TV and it's their big moment and just because they're not fighters, they want to have that memorable call, you know? And I think there is a little bit of truth to that, you know? That this guy was thinking, hey, I want to be that guy. Yeah, let me save you. Yeah, like he wanted to get that memorable moment and then you can look back and... People can say that's a great ref. He almost stopped it, but he knew not to stop it, you know. And um, I don't know. It's just, it's awkward. I always liked Manny Pacquiao. I always liked Floyd. And now, like, Manny's pretty much washed up, and Floyd's at the end of his run. And it's just kind of... It's kind of weird to see Pacquiao just, like, fight in another time zone. No one really yeah. cared leading up to the fight. And even, like, when he lost, like, I didn't really even see people partying or defending him. People are just kind of indifferent about Manny Pacquiao at this point. And that was my yeah. big takeaway. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. It's just, I didn't I didn't care either way. You know what I mean? It was, for, for his benefit, though, I think, like, for him, if he's able to rematch this guy, I think that's the best thing for him. I think he... I don't know, man. I heard a lot, some crazy shit on the coalition from Naota about like Jeff Horn who beats like everyone in the division except for Spence. And fuck, I didn't, I didn't see that. Did you? Well, me, I had Nolta on the show last week, and we were talking about it. I, I will now. This is just me. I will never laugh at any fighter and say they can't beat another fighter. 
because that's my biggest pet peeve is when people – we'll get into this later with our boy Shawnee. When people are going, oh, Shawnee's got no chance. Listen, <laughs> Shawnee's 28-0. Y'all need to chill. But – um is a higher level of fighter than Jeff Horn against a lower level opponent than Pacquiao. Oh, yeah, but don't you. don't tell that to don't tell that to people on the internet because they'll go, "Oh, is uh, who is he fought?" You know. Well, how many fighters in the history do they have to get an opportunity before they get to say, "Oh, I fought that guy." Right. Come on, guy. Like it's you're using these straw man arguments because you're basically just saying, "Oh, I've never heard of him." Sure. That's sure. what you're basically telling me. It's like. Some guy tried to tell me Oscar Valdez shouldn't be an HBO main eventer. And that's like my, I go, oh, you've never heard of him. Because if you had heard of him, you would know his style is entertaining. Yeah. Right? Isn't that the translation for that? I'm not familiar with him. But um, Jeff Horn, honestly, I think if they rematch, I think Jeff Horn's going to beat him more decisively. Decisively. Because he's going to go into that rematch with confidence that he did well, and a chip on his shoulder with people saying he didn't win outright. Yeah, I don't. I think there's a chance he could beat a 40 year old guy again. But I. Oh wait, so you don't want me to answer the Pacquiao question? You're saying, I think that he is the definition of styles make fights. I think him versus Keith Thurman is an interesting fight. I think him versus Sean Porter is the worst matchup ever for him. Yeah, I mean, I I think guys I, who want to move against him and he's just going to be all reckless because you saw how he fights. He doesn't know how to throw a proper punch at all. He just swarms on you. And the Hornet's a great nickname for him. Throws his head in there, throws these horrible form punches. But his strategy is to be in shape and just to club you. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I like Naoto. He obviously knows a lot more about boxing than I do, but... Fuck, I, I could, I wouldn't, this is just my opinion, I wouldn't pick him against, it, like, anyone in the top eight. I'm not saying he couldn't beat him, but to say, like, oh, he knocks Danny Garcia the fuck out, like, I think that's a little too much. Well, and, I mean, the other thing to think, too, is, are we convinced Danny's ever coming back to box? Because this is another thing I'm tired of. If he is or if he isn't, I don't think Jeff Horn could knock him out. Well, probably not. I don't think, and we don't even know if Jeff Horn has knockout. I mean, Nolta's our guy, but like he's probably just saying a statement this a little above his pay grade because people are basically making it sound like Jeff Horn's the worst fighter ever. Yeah, yeah, that that he's could probably be right. just saying something like, just saying something super outrageous so someone validate gets his point that Jeff Horn's good. But what to my point on Dan Garcia. You get these genius reporters. Danny Garcia and his dad told people, I'm retired. And everyone goes, well, uh, we wonder when he's coming back. As far as we know, he said he's retired. I don't know when people stop believing people, but they said he's retired. Would you Would you pick Jeff Horn against Kale Brook? Probably because the head on the eyes would probably. I think that would be a real even fight. Honestly, if I was Eddie Hearn, I'd try to make that fight. Because I think Kell Brook has a real shot in that fight. Yeah. And P- you could sell it like Jeff Horn is one of the most feared people in the division. He just beat Pacquiao. And then, like, if Kell Brook loses to him, you just lost to the guy that lost that beat Pacquiao. Yeah. For Kell Brook, it's a really, really good fight because he has nothing to lose. Luke, do you think that's the, 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 a rematch is next, or do you think that... Uh, honestly, I think Crawford's probably licking his chops to just destroy this guy. I think what's going to happen, and if this was me booking, hopefully Crawford would get past Ndongo, and then I'd try to expedite that fight for um, Jeff Horn versus Terrence Crawford. And then if Crawford beats him, now all of a sudden Crawford's got that welterweight title, and if Pacquiao wants to come back, he can either fight for the belt or he can fight Jeff Horn. You don't think there's a chance after uh, McGregor that Floyd could say? I mean, I, I've heard, I, I've been reading stories that he may have to fight again financially. Oh, he's he's in a both him and Manny are in terrible financial spaces right now. He made what was it two hundred fifty million in one year and didn't pay taxes. 
I don't care how much money you have. That's two years ago, and that's a lot of money that you have to pay 33% on with um, interest that you owe. Yeah, so just in the last couple of days, I've tried to like brains like what there, <clears throat> what there is for him. I do now think it is a possibility if Canelo was to be Golovkin that Floyd could go to 160 to fight him. I don't, I don't see that one, but I think that I know this is gonna hurt you, but I do think that if this money stuff is true with Floyd, which it does seem to, he might hang around a little bit too long, and you yeah, might get you I might know. get that sad Floyd moment because it's getting to be that point where these guys they're older, you know, and um, yeah, like Floyd's gonna do well against Connor, and people will say he'll turn back the clock. But let's be real, he should not be fighting anyone that's a top five guy right now. I wouldn't I wouldn't pick anyone to beat him still. He's got, I gotta see that that he's that, that he's gone backwards. Yeah, I'm I'm just saying that I wouldn't I wouldn't be if I was advising Floyd, I wouldn't be thrilled to be in there with the Sean Porters, the Keith Thurmans, the Terrence Crawfords. Not saying he doesn't beat him, but I'm just saying No, you're right. Like, you're right. You're physically right. as an older guy fighting younger guys who have yet to make their mark on the sport the same way he has, you're the guy that has everything to lose. And these guys are like, wow, I'm fighting that guy I grew up watching on TV. And that's a bad spot to be in. That's basically what happened to Pacquiao. Jeff Horn's a guy that saw him years ago on pay-per-views, probably bought the pay-per-views, and he really trained like this was the biggest fight of his life and he didn't freeze yeah no i i see what you're i don't know maybe maybe he will try and fight pacquiao again yeah but the like if he fights pacquiao they have to do it somewhere somewhere overseas if floyd's hanging around and he's got to make money it's not going to be against keith thurman no it's it's gonna it's gonna gonna oh go ahead it ha- it ha- it'll have to be like Pacquiao against like a Mexican star. It's not if he's fighting and he needs money that bad. It's not, he's not going to get it against Keith Thurman and Errol Spence. And I don't think. Well, I think that this is just me. I think that if he beats Mayweather or McGregor, which he should, the next fight that he's probably going to try to make if he makes a fight is Jeff Horn. Yeah, I mean, yeah. For I mean. Yeah, there's more money in fighting Jeff Horn than there is fighting Keith Thurman or Earl Spence. There's got to be. Like, I I really think that he could do that, and he could say, I beat the guy that that beat Manny Pacquiao. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, to me, it kind of bums me out, man, because we all felt, like, I felt like, wow, Floyd was the guy who beat the game. He left, like, there's an MMA fighter. His name's George St. Pierre. Yeah, I think it's super cool what he did. He made a lot of money, and then he left when he was champion, and he retired. And I go, you know what? That's pretty cool, you know? You make a lot of money, you retire without getting knocked out. I'm a fan of that. For me, I was really hoping, because there's so few people that are pro boxers that get in and then don't get abused by the game. And I was really hoping Floyd would just stay out and it wouldn't be uh, this way. But at the same time, as I've always said, I've heard stories about Floyd spending money. And um, it's not good, man. Yeah, I read something about the gambling has progressed a lot. Well, I, I, you know, this show, we don't do the speculation stuff. We don't know about that. Um all I can know is, like, I've been in places in Las Vegas where the bar gets a phone call. Um, then they play over the speakers that um, Floyd Mayweather has a friend in the club. And I'm not even talking about, like, people think of him as adult clubs. We're just talking about a normal dance club, not even the cool club. Just like a ordinary place, but you have to pay 10, 20 bucks to get into it. Maybe 50, I forget. And they'll go, 
Drake's on the house tonight. He bought the whole bar out for his boy being in the club. And I'm thinking, that's like 20 grand. Yeah, yeah. And he, he, that, that literally happened when I was in Las Vegas one time. I was just chilling in a nightclub. I was wearing my, my whatever that I could wear in my loafers, and I was trying to look cool. And then all of a sudden, I saw a guy, walk, they did that phone call, and there were guys getting three Coronas. And I'm going, oh, my God. And, I mean, this is... This was a Thursday night of a fight week. This isn't even like the big events. And that's how he's spending his money. So I'm I'm just saying like that kind of troubles me. Yeah, I mean, I guess I still have to see like, you know, him saying I have to fight again before it's 100% true. I, I don't know. Well, it's some, we'll put it like this, something's up. Yeah, there's usually fire where there's some smoke. Something's up. But um, we got to shoot now because um, these guys were saying a bunch of stuff this week. HBO is bringing back boxing, pure carnage on HBO. Uh, great card. As always, they're saying uh, Al Heyman, PBC, has got the worst fight ever coming up. Sucks. It's just awful. They don't understand why they're even in the boxing business. And when I look at them, I see very comparable cards. Um, I don't know. I First off, let's get your opinion on all this stuff, and then I'm going to start shooting. I mean, I think both, both cards are pretty good. Um, I don't see the HBO card being better or that much better than – I'm more interested in, in, in the Fox one. Just because I think maybe the matchups are a little a slightly more competitive, um, I, I'm looking at both of them side by side. Well, here here's what I'm saying: HBO lost top rank, and now they're basically Golden Boy and K2. And it literally, this is what HBO boxing feels like to me right now. Their new business model is: um, we're going to go on Twitter. And we're going to look at what the hardcore fight fans want. So they're going, we're going to get uh, the super flyweights from Japan because people have been going online to stream these fights for years. So we're going to bring them over and that's dope. Mm -hmm. Then they'll go, we're going to get a couple of Mexican dudes. We'll get a Japanese guy who they like to run into each other and just punch each other. Put those guys on there. Uh, People like Golovkin, we're going to bring him out. Three times a year. They like Canelo. We're going to bring him out. It. I'm not really sure where. He, do you think HBO boxing is going the right way or the wrong way right now? I don't. I mean, I'm trying to think of. They've had some good cards this year, I guess. I mean, I mean, they still have Ward, I guess. So that's. Or. Or both award fights recently have been on there. I don't know, man. But like you said, I think they're, yeah. I mean, it, hardcore fans. I guess not to. I'm not picking on Naoto at all, but you know, people that are really in super super into boxing and that are really big into those smaller divisions. I mean, I I know they're bringing Inua over. They're they're you know obviously really big in the Roman Gonzalez business, but I mean, I don't. I, th- I the cards are just very. They're both very good. I don't know. I can't say. I mean, like, if you look at the opening bout, the Joe Smith and uh, Brea, that's obviously better than the Spilka fight. Well, I mean, but, I mean, let's just get into some of these fight breakdowns. Um, we're, let's talk about Joey Smith versus uh, Brea. And I, I should probably call him Joe Smith, but I just like calling him Joey Smith. Yeah, people are probably going to hate on I don't. I think it's a, an easy fight for Brea. I don't. I don't think. I, I think he should beat him and beat him easily. I don't. I hate to talk shit about Joe, I, but I'm not I'm like beyond impressed by any any other wins he has. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think at that point, Luki, and it's not to talk shit about. I think there's about thirty guys that could could be Hopkins. Well, I mean, you have to remember, you're basically saying. Um, you're basically like, hey, um, God, I lost my track. Like, hey, there's 30 guys out there that can beat a 50-year-old that used to be good at boxing. 
That's yeah, basically I mean, what you said. Like, let's subtract. See, this is what gets people confused. Is people look at images and names in boxing, and they don't look at skill sets. Yeah. When we look at this fight, we got a, a blue collar fighter who has uh, in Smith who has a decent jab, but he really loads up on his right hand, and when he mm-hmm. misses, he comes back with a left hook. And we've got a multi-dimensional Sullivan Brea who has a lot of different aspects to his game. Yeah. He can fight on his back foot, but he's also kind of clumsy when he comes forward. Kind of fights like Frankenstein. To me, I don't really know how to call this fight, but I feel like it's going to be an awkward fight. Because I don't feel like their styles are going to match up that well. Yeah, from like the Smith team, I can't. Like, after those two pretty big wins, I can't... This is, like, the best... I can't... I'm shocked that they came up with this guy, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, just the matchmaker in my brain thinks that Joe Smith has to get the win here, right? Because if they don't, like, what are you doing as a yeah, networker? Yeah, that's you what I mean, a, yeah. You got a guy who just picked up a win over Fonfara. Sure, he got lost again, but you can say he basically... Uh, derailed his career, and then he stopped a legend on your network for a show that was completely built around the guy that he stopped. They didn't even show that his ring walk. Right, and if you lose to a guy that people have already seen lose on TV, there's a large portion of the public are just going to think like, that still think he's not that good. And the Andre Ward fight, though, I found it very entertaining, and I thought it was a really fun fight to be at live. Berea did all right in that fight, but I wouldn't say he put up a sizable fight. I'd say his face acted kind of like the mitt of a baseball, a baseball mitt getting hit by a baseball. I mean, he took damage. Yeah, he he did all right. He's done. He he, he did better than a lot of guys have done against Ward. He did all right, but I didn't think it was close. No, but it, I thought it was a fun fight. Oops, I I uh, put my computer on my fruit bowl. Um, I don't know. Like, see, this is the problem with this card for me, Mark, is we got, maybe I'm too much about narrative and stories and all that stuff. I want to know a little something about these guys training camp or something. It just feels like here they are. They're going to be on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Tune in. They're good. (laughs) It's like, I'd like to see a little program where Joe Smith's working construction and then he goes to a gym I'd like to see where Sullivan Berea trains after leaving um, Abel Sanchez. I'd like to know this stuff, you know? Instead, it just seems like two semi-anonymous fighters in a division where it feels like the best fighter in the division is leaving and Kovalev might be inactive for a year or two. So it's basically these guys are fighting in a division that doesn't have a lot of activity going on right now. Yeah, I mean, it probably. Yeah, I guess the top half of the division is older and probably, you know, could be moving out of it soon. So, I mean, I guess from that point, it's like maybe trying to see who, who's going to become the guy. Because, like, my my thinking for this fight, and I know you're like, you get fights sometimes that I'm way off on. Like, I'll, I'll think I'll see something and you're just. Um, right on it. Like Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman. I would have bet a lot of money that Danny was going to win that fight. And you told me, nope, I don't see how he won. On this one, I'm pretty sure Joe's going to win this fight. Like, I'm pretty sure. Not by knockout, right? He has to. Or, or he, he like drops him and then Berea yeah, I, figures out a way to survive. And yeah, he, I guess he could stun him early, really bad early. Luke, and then he, you know, the guy kind of like freezes up or doesn't know what to do. Or like, I like, I see what you're saying, but, and this is the worst reason for picking a fight, but I just don't get what, if he loses this fight, I don't get why he made the fight. Yeah. That, that that's in the back of my mind too. <laughs> now that you brought it up, like, <laughs> like, the the, <laughs> This is like the worst ma- made match ever because like unless like there is some uh voluntary or contendership title eliminator but if this is just a regular fight and this was the fighter you could get 
This is the weirdest fight ever. I mean, if if they were both to lose, they could still make Monahan Smith probably, right? I mean, it's not it won't be on TV like it could have been now, or like a, not a main like it could have been if they did it now. But I think no matter what, you can make um, Monahan versus. Um, yeah, you could do him for Smith no matter what, but it's just what... I mean, money is money. Right. That's what people don't get. Like, Joe Smith can lose, go back, beat a guy or two, and now you can do the fight. Shawnee and Joe can lose. Shawnee could win. Joe could lose. Joe could win. Shawnee could lose. You can still do these fights. But it's, it's just... like. It just feels weird to me when you got a guy like Shawnee, who HBO likes, and you got you got Nassau Coliseum opening up, and they're like, yeah, let's put uh, Joe Smith in California the same night Shawnee's fighting in the Nassau Coliseum. I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not like inside information from Kevin, but I, I don't get to, I think if once Sean loses, that's it. Yeah, well, I mean, um, our boy Kevin's covering the fight for the website this weekend. Our, uh, inside, I mean, there's a lot of boxers like that, man. Like, uh, who's to say if Joe Smith loses, he's not going to retire, you know? Yeah, I, I think, like, I think, Sean is trying to, get to see how far he can actually take it, and then once that, that, like, gets derailed, I think maybe that's it. I think Sean's trying to push himself to the limit, and he'll, he'd like to get the Joe Smith fight in New York. Right. Because it would be a good fight. So it's like if he loses, he'll chill and he'll try to get that Joe Smith fight. And if they can get a verbal agreement, win a tune up and we'll do the fight. Because I I feel like the but why are we talking about Shawnee yet? Like Joe yeah. Smith Joe Smith basically is the kind of fighter who is very good. He's very talented. He's got elements of boxing, but he's got that dog in him. And I think he's the hardest puncher in this division. I really do. Um, I Besides think, Stevenson, right? I think he hits harder. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I don't know. Because if you think about it, now this is the only reason I say he hits harder. Stevenson has more boxing skill than him. The way he sets up his punches, there's there's a technique and a hip thrust. A lot of Joe's knockouts are coming through borderline arm punches. Like, he's just knocking guys down. That's just why I'm saying I think he's the hardest puncher in the division. Yeah, I mean, he's up there. If he, if he's not, he definitely has – he definitely could stop this guy with one shot. And I also – Ward dropped this guy. Yeah, and I also feel like Berea – there's certain fighters, and I got this feeling being around Berea, once they lose, they're never going to be quite the same again. Like, Sullivan Berea, what made him so dangerous was that he truly didn't think that he could lose. But now that he's lost, it's kind of like, well, I'm going to see how far I can go. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people were really high on that guy, Shabransky, and he, he, he really had a good performance after the Ward, the Ward fight, so who knows? I mean, well, I, I could have told you that he was going to smoke Shabransky. That well, people thought he was gonna, that guy could beat Ward Shabransky. So well, people don't like Ward. That's like if I told, like, I can pick a fighter I don't like. Like, let's pick um, let's not say Golovkin. Let's pick um, I don't know. We'll just pick the a only fighter fight. I've ever heard you like ever like really really super hate on was Mauricio Herrera ever in my life. Yeah, because everyone overrates him. (laughs) It's not even like I'm hating on him. It's just like uh, this guy like lost like a bunch of fights. And I'm cool with Mauricio. It's like he's lost a bunch of fights. But then people will be like, well, he beat Danny Garcia. (laughs) He almost beat David Benavides. Yeah, it's like (laughs) they'll bring up. (laughs) I just get tired when I. And you know, that's not even. I'm not even mad at Mauricio. I'm mad at like these idiots on the Internet. That'll like they don't even think for themselves or watch these fights, and they'll be like, 
they just parrot what other people say. And then, like, I lash out when it builds up. I bottle up and explode. But that is funny that you're, like, the only person I ever hated on. I don't know. Is that is that me or you that cut out, bro? Uh, that was me. Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I, you were going in and out for a second, but now I heard you. Okay, I was just saying that's funny that the only fighter I've ever you've ever heard me hate on is Mauricio Herrera. That's such a random fighter to hate on. It's like saying like the only team yeah, that's I've ever only the only team I've ever hated on is the Utah Jazz. <laughs> it's like picking on like the worst. Um, let's go to the next fight on this: Jezreel Corrales versus Robinson Castellanos. Um, Robinson Castellanos is coming in off of a Yuri Orcas Gamboa uh, victory. He stopped him a little behind the curtain. I was there. For that fight, uh, Gamboa basically said in Spanish he couldn't walk after he weighed in. And I remember someone tried to interview him, and he was so dead. Like, he, people were saying that he had to be, um, they had to put their arms around him to carry him to the scale and stuff. Huh. It's really drawn out. So, when people are looking at Robinson Castellanos, I'm not viewing him as this, um, world-beating fighter. He's had some great performances. He has a high loss ratio. I'm not viewing him as a bad fighter, but Jezreel Corrales is a fighter that can fight out of orthodox and southpaw. He switches, and he got he has legit one-punch knockout power over guys that were world-rated. So to me, this fight really seems like a mismatch on paper. Yeah, it looks that way. I've only seen Corrales fight twice against the, the Asian champion, and he looked very, very impressive both times, so I think it, he should hand, he should get him out of there, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that this is one of those moments where people loved Gamboa. They remembered him. He was a name. This guy beat Gamboa, and they're like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. But they didn't also remember that outside of him dropping Gamboa, there were a lot of rounds Gamboa was winning and catching him clean. And there was a lot of looping right hands that he wasn't making a good adjustment on to straighten the punch out to do that, to meet with Gamboa. And he's fighting a fighter who's now faster than Gamboa, more than likely, and doesn't gas out like Gamboa, and seemingly gives you two different looks that present different problems. And he struggled with uh, adjustments with Gamboa, who's a good boxer, but has cardiovascular issues. Yeah, I mean, like we said, it, it it appears to be. I don't. Castellanos is a weird fighter. Like he has some really good performances against some good guys, and then some really stinker performances. He's a really strange career, man. It's like, I don't like Emmanuel Augustus type shit. It's just really. I mean, he could be good one night and then look weird the next. So I mean, I really don't know what to expect. But like I said, I've only seen the other guy fight twice, and he he looked impressive against top level competition. Yeah, well, um, I think one of the big... I mean, Luki, that guy had a real good case last year for Fighter of the Year. Who? Corrales. I, he did. See, the problem is, and this is the what HBO is going for right now, no one saw the fights. Yeah. They were, yeah. On, they were on at like 2 in the morning on the West Coast. A hundred people told you about him. 20 of them are really nice. 80 of them told you you're an idiot if you didn't see him. So, of course, the majority of people are going to go, we're not going to watch those fights because you're being mean to us. And then the reasonable people are like, hey, man, you should really give it a look, you know? Pretty good fight. Yeah, I think he was like 30 to 1 the first fight he, against, oh. was it, I think, Yamanaka, I think? Yeah, uh, Yuka, yeah, I mean, we're just going to come off borderline racist by mispronouncing this guy's name. We'll just, it was like Yaka, Yakanichi Yama. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can't. But anyways, so, um, yeah, I mean, this guy, yeah, I'm I'm just looking at his record, and it's like, he has good wins. He's Why he's, do I always forget that guy's name? Uchiyama. I always fucking call him Yamanaka. I don't know why. Yeah, but, that's, yeah, yeah. but um, I think this is going to be a real rough one. This is going to be a really, really rough one for um, 
Castellanos in this fight because what people also I feel like aren't thinking about is he took damage in the Gamboa fight and at most he probably got two weeks off and had to jump right back yeah. to the camp. Corrales yeah, has been training and not being damaged and in going into this fight. And that fight seems like it was just a couple weeks ago. It wasn't that long ago, man. It yeah. really wasn't. I know it's May to July, but it really wasn't that long ago. It yeah. At most, like, basically two months ago. Yeah, that's a quick turnaround. Very quick. And you're talking about a guy who has, what, about... So, the main... What do you... What do you what do you think about the main event? I think it's a really dangerous fight for Muray, and he could get like really bad I think, damage to his brain, I think man. Muir is in a really awkward spot because you get a lot of people on the internet that go, "Man, this guy's a crowd friendly, fan friendly fighter. I love it when he just stands there and gets hit. It's just wills." And I, part of me wants all these people to say that that leave the comments. Can we can we start collecting five dollars for this guy? Just right now, instead of saying you enjoy it. So, just in case anything goes wrong with him down the road, you guys don't just disappear. Because um, I think Burchell's going to really hurt this guy. Yeah, I think so he's I... been through a lot of wars. And I agree with you, man. I think Mior is a incredible fighter, a warrior, a very limited boxer. To use the word boxer is kind of... Um, being nice, he's a very good person at using distance and throwing his left hand into every single shot. He throws all of his power into his shots and basically just tries... He throws like he's pitching overhand fastballs. He throws like real Ray Sanchez on the diamond. And, yeah. Um, he's just been in too many wars, man. And this guy, Burchelt, when I was watching film on him to do this show, he's not what these people are thinking, man. He's going to go out there and box him. He's going to touch him up, bust him up, and then he's going to knock him out from the outside. Yeah, he, he's a, a, a lot more talented than what I was expecting. The first time I saw him was against Vargas, and it's just impressive, really a lot of leverage on a lot of shots. And it was, that guy's like a tough guy that's probably going to take more shots than the normal guy. It's just, I don't know, dangerous. I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll be, like, I'm sure pretty good to watch, but. I don't know if it will. I think that what you're going to see in the, the main event and co-main event, and maybe I'm wrong, you're basically going to see guys who don't really have a jab and a gauge of distance who are used to walking people down and punching when they smother them get hit a lot to the point of have, having to bleed and then probably get brutally knocked out in very one-sided fights. That's what I see. Yeah, I mean, you're probably right. And people are going to be like, oh, what a bunch of... Like, I think that what this is going to show is it matters to learn how to box. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I mean, that's what... Like, Miura... Like, what I don't like about this fight is he hits really hard with his left hand, but he literally can't box. Like, I know that sounds like a mean statement, but he just shoves his lead hand out there... And then he's throwing everything on his left hand, and he right. has one punch knockout power. Yeah, if he hits you, but he does not move his head. He stands up as straight as possible, and all of his shots are winged. Yeah, even even in the last fight, I mean, I I I, I scored it for him fairly wide, but he, he took a lot of punishment. And I, again, no, it's probably going to kill me. I can't remember who he fought, but I want to say it was like a journeyman kind of. It wasn't. It wasn't the lead of the lead. It was Miguel Roman, if I'm remembering right. But it was a guy. Like it was just like a. In my opinion, this is gonna sound bad. It was a co-main event kind of showcase fight. It was the old school yeah. HBO. Hey, let's get you on TV and let's get you some shine, so that you can uh, get into this fight. Basically, the HBO kind of matched up on that card. They were trying to make Miura Vargas too, and they almost got Miura beat, and they got Vargas' <laughs> yeah. career ended. Right. It was, if like, the way I, it was presented to the public, which it truthfully wasn't, was this is a tune up card. This is a card to set up for a big fight in the summer. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what they were, they were going for. 
Yeah, I guess that guy Roman wasn't a journeyman. He had he had won a lot in a row. Maybe I just let his his record like clouded a little bit, but he was a um, he was a world class fighter, just not a a champion level fighter. He's a guy that you would expect a good fighter to have to fight to be great. You get what I'm saying? He's a developmental yeah, fighter. Right. But Miura basically was losing a fight to him, in my opinion, and then his power and his pressure just was too much for the guy. And I think what I'd be interested to find out was how much notice did that guy have for that fight? Because for all we know, that guy had four or five weeks and, um, yeah, but I think that that's a very dangerous fight. I agree with you. Yeah, for, like, people's well-being and shit. It's fucking... <laughs> yeah, I mean, and credit to Miura's promoter. They realize he's taking a lot of damage. The, not this year, but all last year, they gave him just one fight where he knocked out some poor soul in one round. Right. So that tells me that they realize our fighter gets hit a ton if we're going to keep him that inactive for a whole year. But at the same time, I mean, he's got maybe three more fights at most in him. Yeah, you would think at at that rate, the way the level of shots he takes. Yeah. He has no defense. Nah, it's not even, there's no attempt made or anything. Who was that, that guy that used to be on Friday night fights who just, he was an Asian fighter. I want to say the name was like Jay Yoon Kim or something. He used to walk in a high guard like Ruslan, and he'd just get punched all the time. You know what I'm I can't talking think about? Of it. I, yeah, I can picture it, but I can't think of the name. Uh, name. Um, but he just reminds me of a similar style to that guy, where this guy was... It's just like you can picture some trainer just lying to him. Like, oh, you're a warrior, you're a warrior, you know? You give the fans what they want. Just sit there and bang, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, what I see with this HBO card is HBO is kind of going for doing a venue in a popular area where boxing is popular on the West Coast, L.A., and bringing a fight card that would typically be broadcast from overseas to the U.S. because it appears a lot of people enjoy those type of cards. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. That's And they're throwing Joe Smith on this card as well. So that um, then we got the card that KH will be at. We're going to have another podcast this week with uh, Kicking It With KH podcast with him and Adam Sperber. I mean, this card, in my opinion, people are going to say, oh, you're biased, blah, 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 blah. This card's stacked, man. They got Eric Walker versus Patrick Day, which might be the best fight out of all of the fights this weekend. I want to see this fight, man. Somebody Facebook Live that fight. Yeah, that could be the most competitive, even matched fight. On that, that's a really, really good fight against two really good athletes. I, I wish I, I would like to see it somehow too. Yeah, but I mean, hey, don't. That's an Al Heyman fight, so it sucks. Yeah, it sucks. You know, they don't do nothing good. Um, one of the most attractive women in women's boxing, uh, Alicia Napoleon, is fighting for a title, the IBF World Title. So yeah, shout out I've, to her. I've seen her fight three or four times. We have like a channel out at, for some reason on direct TV, like a New York channel. And I've actually seen her on a couple of cards with Patrick day. Yeah. But she's probably the most attractive. Well, let's stop being a sexist and viewing her looks. How do you, um, how do the you most, rate her skills? The most athletic female fighter I've seen. Okay. So like you're basically saying she can, she can do some stuff. So, she can throw punches while she's moving. She could she pivot and can hook off punches, off jabs and shit. It's not. It, 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 she's pretty impressive, man. Uh, it's hard to say because the, who the people I've seen her fight was at the very beginning of her, her career and they couldn't do anything. So I, I'm not sure, but she looks impressive as an athlete. I think she was into another sport first, but yeah, just like looks like a pretty good athlete. Well, it's it's gonna get a lot harder for her soon because right. she's in the same division as Clarissa Shields. And if you win a title, you're basically going to fight Clarissa Shields. 
quick. Because Fairly she, soon, yeah. She needs opponents, so. <laughs> Fairly soon. So if you're doing 10-round title fights and you're in the division Clarissa Shields is at, there you go. But I've always thought that if the, I was doing my thing, I said this to someone all, about a year ago, maybe it's a half year ago, I said the way to build up Clarissa Shields, if you really want to do this right, was you did four women at this division. Clarissa Shields, Raquel Miller, Alicia Napoleon, and uh, Mar- uh, Marcella Cornejo. Right? You get all four of them. You have them beat a few people on the same card, right? Then right. you match them up against each other. So you go Raquel Miller, Cornejo, because they have, they've they got a feud going. And you put in uh, Napoleon versus Clarissa Shields. They fight. Winner meets each other. Then the losers meet each other. Hey, now maybe someone gravitates to one of these fighters. Yeah, that, I mean, that would be... It would make the most sense. I saw the Cornejo live at one, that last event I went to. I think she's trained by Joel Diaz. She's pretty. She looks pretty good too. I'm, I think Shields is like physically the most imposing and biggest, hardest puncher out of those four. But I mean, who knows, man? What? I just feel like there needs to be a little bit more creativity pushing the women because I don't buy this. Um, people don't enjoy women's boxing because it's boxing, but then they love MMA. Because if you look at women's MMA, they don't have, like, the highest rate of, like, finishing and knockouts, but there's still a big following for it. So I think part of the problem in boxing is just people are very lazy to kind of create stories for women. And I think there's also kind of boxing's this old school sport where, like, sexism's okay. Where they're like, ah, we can't have women back here. So yeah, I don't. I, I have a diff. I don't know, man. I I don't want to say like what I think about it because it com- it'll probably come off bad to like MMA fans. So. Okay, well, um, Jamal James is taking on JoJo Dan. That's another another fight that's interesting. You know, you got Jamal James, a former um, prospect who got beat on TV, and you got JoJo Dan, who's the fledgling former name guy trying to stay relevant yeah i mean it, it, it's a good matchup it's probably clearly easily the second best guy james has ever fought so for him whether jojo dan is faded or not it's still probably the most talented guy he's fought so and if he it it, it it i mean it could springboard him into something else and if dan is able to pull off the upset then maybe he gets one more chance so i mean it, it'll probably be competitive that that guy's like a really compact small tough guy to land clean on if you if you're besides Brooke, I mean, in those busy A fights and shit, that was that's hard to land on that guy. Well, and to be fair, Jamal James's last two outings have been very tough for him. So he got a split decision over Lucky Boy Wale Amatoso, which, if I remember right, a lot of people thought Wale beat him. Then your Danny's uh, Yugos, who trains with Ismael Salas, he just beat the brakes off of him. Yeah, he yeah. kind of. So this is he's basically going off of two fights where he doesn't have much confidence going into it. Right. Very interesting to see where he goes. The way I view this fight is the winner of this fight is the B side to someone big. Sure. So sure. like this, the winner of this fight, what's your prize, Lamont Peterson? <laughs> yeah, for two hundred thousand. Yeah, the winner of this fight, you get to fight Lamont Peterson in DC. The winner of this fight gets, um, who'd be another name that you could get? Victor Ortiz or Brandon Rios? Yeah, maybe if Danny was to come back. Yeah, you get, the winner of this gets Danny Garcia in Philly. Like, it just, to me, it feels like these guys are fighting for the opportunity to try to pull an upset down the road. Yeah, I mean, but it's good money, so. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the, I hate to say it to some people who are strictly fans of this. A lot of this is about money. A lot of this is about business. A lot of this is about positioning yourself in a spot where I've had a fighter tell me they didn't think they could beat another fighter, but they wanted to be in that spot so they could make that money. And that's yeah, a I cold think, world when you have to say it like that. Same thing. I argue with a lot of my good friends that are super into NBA. 
a lot of people have they still romanticize sports like these dudes stay up at night and dream about championships and shit. It, 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 if you put them all on lie detector tests and ask them, would you rather have the most championships or the most money of all time? They're all going to say the most money of all time. It's, well, I mean, I think there's some, the, the all time greats probably aren't built that way, but I think the majority of the NBA players right now are just looking at those salaries and saying, all right, I'm going to take that. Yeah. Look, when I say that though, I don't, mean that they're not giving it they're not trying to win but once they leave that arena that's it like people oh, are all yeah. over Harden because he went to the strip club after they got knocked out they don't have like those we care more about championships than players do to i think to be honest yeah no i agree with you so um spilka versus kawanaki this could be an interesting fight if this was on hbo everyone would say this was a good fight because spilka is gonna run it Kawanaki, but he's got some trickery because he trains with Ronnie Shields, and I think Ronnie Shields is one of the best trainers in the game, and yeah, no one ever gives him price. He, he gets no credit, man. But Ronnie Shields is a real OG, man. And um, Kawanaki's a fat boy that can fight. He threw a thousand punches in a f- eight round fight. Jeez. So you've got you've got one guy who's a high volume puncher at heavyweight taking on a guy who arguably was giving Deontay Wilder all he could handle. Yeah. And some some genius told me that Spilka isn't even a B-side anymore. It's more like a D-side. Do Not you in that agree division. With that? Not in that division. Well, I mean, how how did, did he lose to someone after Wilder? Let me look it up. We need a knockout, man, to get a swing bout on. I mean, Spilka, his only loss lately are to Bryant Jennings, who's top 10, top 15 heavyweight. No shame yeah. in that. Yeah. Deontay Wilder in a fight he was doing very well in. Yeah, I don't know if you could find two guys outside of the top three or four that could be that competitive with Ortiz and Klitschko, as Brian Jennings was. He gets overlooked a lot, man. Well, I think part of it is... At the time when he was fighting these people, he didn't really have a promoter pushing him. He was signed to a promoter that was struggling to get dates. This is why people were like, yeah, I want to fight fucking Vlad. was because of performance he did it against him. And he, I, I, for some reason I had to record. I watched the other day. He was fucking landing all over Luis Ortiz, man. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the most... Uh, me and Laura watched that at your place. We watched yeah. that back, and I remember, because I didn't see that fight live, and I was thinking, people really overrated Ortiz in this fight, because Bryant Jennings was doing really good in the start of that fight. Yeah, he didn't understand, I think being like late to boxing, it looks like he doesn't understand yet how to pace, and he didn't, like, he wasn't, he doesn't behave very well when he gets, when he gets hurt. But as far as landing punches and being an athlete and shit, he landed all over that guy. And I heard after fucking Ortiz has a flu or some bullshit like that. But. Oh, yeah, all these guys always got something. Did you hear about the MMA fighter over the weekend? Um, she got something, She got sick, quote-unquote, and she pulled out of her main event fight the day of the fight. Oh, I never heard about that the day of. Look, look, at, look it up after this. What do you mean sick? Like the cold? I'm looking up the what she said. She said she had... Sinatitis? She says she had a sinus infection and she couldn't fight. Fight night. Dang. When that happens, what happens to the other? They, obviously, the other person doesn't get paid, right? No, the other person, what they said, they paid the other person 70 grand. Oh, uh, And the okay. person was going to make 100 grand plus money off the pay-per-view. So Which still sucks, but at least, yeah, you might have had plans with that money. So I can understand they got to give you something. Well, on top of that, it was a title fight. So if she won, now you're a champion. So Yeah, that, it could that, cost you half a million dollars in the long run or something like that. And the girl was basically saying, but she was polite, it's this cool, I don't know where she's from, I want to, I almost want to lump her generically as a Russian, but she's a cool customer. And she was basically like saying like, we fought once before, you beat me two rounds to one, but that third round I was beating you up, and then the day of the fight you don't show up to fight. Uh, I'm not going to say what happened, but you know what happened. Right, right. And it was just like, 
real awkward, but look, I'll, I'll text it to you. It's real, real weird. But, um, our fight, the big fight for us, man, Marcus Brown versus Shawnee Monahan. This is a tough one for me, man, because I like Marcus Brown too, man. Marcus Brown's a cool customer. Good guy. But Shawnee, Shawnee's my, my guy, man. I've, I've been around with Shawnee. We're team Shawnee. Um, this is just the fight Shawnee's always wanted, man. Shawnee wanted to get a fight where someone has heard of him. You've heard the other name. Yeah, Sean's the cool, one of the coolest guys I've met in boxing. Um, I'm happy that he's getting the shot. I have to, you know, not be, I got to keep it real, I guess. Are the kids still saying that? Keep it a buck? Yeah. Marcus Brown's a much better athlete. He's a better boxer. I'm picking Marcus Brown. I'm pulling for Sean. Um, just being friends with Cage, you hear some things that may, I, you know, I'm not going to, I would never say anything about what happens inside those gyms, but um, I think it could be a competitive fight, but, you know, I picked the better athlete, the better boxer, so I'm not going to change now. Cause, I think you know. Sean's got a real chance, and I'll tell you why. Sean sparred Marcus Brown a lot. And the style Marcus had trouble with against that Hot Rod guy, I think Sean, he's better than Hot Rod. Yeah, I mean, I I can definitely see that. I'm just... That I, being I, said, I tend Sean's got to gotta get athletic. through... Sean's got to get through the first three rounds without getting hurt. Right. Because this guy can punch... Brown can punch, too. Brown can really punch. And Brown understands distance. And when I say that, I mean... The end of your punches, when you understand distance, hurt way more if you can get someone at the very end of your punch rather than just a shot that comes through and grazes at some angle. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like, if I have a ruler on your chin and I bring my right hand and I pull my left hand back, which I'm using the metaphor of a ruler, and I turn my right hand, my hip over, and I hit you right on the chin and it's exactly at the length that the ruler ended, that's going to basically be a knockout punch, even if I don't hit hard. Right. If I continuously do that, because the snap and the the momentum to that shot. In my opinion, I mean, I'm, again, I'm, being honest, if I didn't know Sean, I probably, I probably would think it was an even bigger mismatch than it is. But I've just heard other things from people that are a lot closer to it than than I am. So I mean, I'm hoping for a competitive fight. I, I'm obviously pulling for Sean just as hard as I pull for Floyd. So people can stop thinking. You know, I only pull for the black guys. But I am picking Brown to win the fight. Probably out. Probably out point him. I got Shawnee, man. I'm picking Shawnee, and I'll I'll say that. I hope you're right. Yeah, I'll, I'm taking Shawnee, and you know why? Because. All these guys on the internet have been making fun of Shawnee. Oh, he does not a fight. Oh, he does not. He got to 28 0. He got to 28 0. He's a real tough guy. He's a throwback fighter. And I am so sick of these guys who think every boxer either has to be a one punch power puncher or they have to move around the whole fight. Well, they thought Jeff Horn couldn't fight. Yeah, well, in the 1940s and 50s, a lot of these guys, these boxing experts, want to look up and say they're the best, right? They fought really ugly. Like, go watch a Jack Dempsey fight. Like, look up how he looked. And all these guys are, oh, I like Jack Dempsey. Well, you don't like Shawnee? I mean, honestly, look, even if you watch, like, Joe Frazier, it's more of, like, a mauling... It's not, like... Any like stuff that we see today, Joe Frazier's obviously no like not didn't fight like Jack Dempsey and Jack Johnson and shit, but it's not like the prettiest fucking thing that you've ever seen. You know but, what I mean? It's Ray. Basically, the reason, in my opinion, why people say Ray Robinson is the best boxer in the whole world ever is he came up, in my opinion, with the concept of distance, engaging and using feints and all this other stuff. Yeah, because it, before it, him, people just ran at each other. It's the same reason, Luki, I put Maravich so high in basketball, Pistol Pete, because he, he was the first guy that was doing something way different. And it, it, the, the game was completely changed because of Maravich. So we see it today because of him. So what you're saying about Robinson, I get. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just 
I don't know. I, we could break that fight down more, but I think that I think those two fights right there, one of those fights is going to be a good one. Yeah, because, it's got to. Sean has got to make it dirty, right? He's got to get inside and. Well, you basically you got two fights right here where it's guys in similar positions. A lot of people are looking at like Shawnee, even though he's never lost, is like overprivileged and not good, even though he's a blue collar fighter against an Olympian. So you have a lot of people saying, "Oh, he can't beat this guy." Whoop de whoop. Then you got Spilka, who's only lost twice to two top ten, top fifteen guys, taking on a guy who's unproven in the top fifteen who's a, fo- a fellow Polish fighter, but because he's not from Poland, he doesn't live in Poland, uh, Spilka doesn't take him as serious. And those two are fighting in a grudge match. And you got a lot of people saying, oh, Spilka's not very good, Kawanaki's going to destroy him. I'm just saying, there's a lot of motivation for these underdogs on this card. And that's how you get these kind of Angulo, Lara type fights. Right, right. Is where you have a guy who's listening to the critics and motivated by him. And then people go, yeah. oh, how did it happen? I mean, and I obviously it doesn't mean to, but they've, Sean has been asking for this fight with Brown for a long time, and I would have to think that has something to do with the sparring. So I think maybe it's a little more competitive than I'm thinking in my mind, even. I'm just saying they, they know each other from sparring, so it's going to be like I mean, round it, 80. Like if Sean was getting fucking fucked up all the time in sparring, I don't think they'd be asking for the fight as much as they have been. Yeah, well, I'm just saying this is round 80. Right. They're going right. to start at round 80, round 90. It's not going to be round one feel-out round. They know what's going on. Main event, Omar Figueroa, Robert Guerrero. What's going on? I think the winner fights Spence. Yeah, that's not good. In Texas. How about Victor Ortiz? How about Brandon Rios? Can we settle for those? I'm kind of enjoying, maybe I'm the only one, I'm enjoying the PBC Senior Tour. I'm enjoying, like, the guy, the guys that aren't quite, it's like the retirement leg of boxing. Like, I'm down for Robert Guerrero fights. I just don't really want to see Robert in with the, the best guys. Yeah, I mean, this fight probably won't. I think it's Robert not- wins. And people are going to say, you're a homer, blah, blah, blah. This is the first time Robert's fighting a guy his size. Omar yeah, Figueroa he's... is a lightweight who probably who just can't make the weight. Yeah, he's he he he's got a good chance. I think it's I I, I can't call it. I, I think it's fifty fifty. I, I think now I don't know if this will have a if it if it goes to the scoring. I think that probably PBC wants Fig to win. But you got to remember but... PBC out of all these organizations when it comes to scorecards. People are getting fair shakes on their cards. Remember when Jamie McDonald beat the guy that was signed to Al? Yeah, it, it seems like there was one that like two weeks ago that was fucked up. Well, the Easter cards were fucked up. The Robert Easter cards were fucked up. Uh, I mean, yeah. That, oh, those, but is that those? Was that PB? Oh, that's that's Broner. That's, that's Broner, but it's yeah. no, that wasn't even PVC. That was just Ohio. I mean, those cards were bad, but I still had Easter winning. Yeah, me too. Me too. But I mean. It did kind of discredit it. Just kind of a weird fight. I, I didn't talk to you. I thought that was a good fight, man. I watched it twice. I thought that shit was good. It was a good one. Um, I got to watch it back again. I think the Pacquiao Horn fight to me, I enjoyed that a little bit better based off of the shock value. So I kind of yeah, obsessed sure. over I, that yeah. one a little more. Yeah, I get that for sure. You know what I mean? Where it was like, whoa, cultural impact. And then it was like... Uh, and I, that style that Shafikov has, although I respect it, it's one of my least favorite. Where it's like, yeah, it might lead do, with but... my head. I'm a southpaw. I'm gonna hang out on your stomach, just kind of grind. And then Easter was landing good shots, but he just couldn't keep them off. And there was just a lot of um, very. If you're in the fight, you go, oh my god, it's grueling and tough. But for the aesthetics of the sport. I'm maybe this is the best way to explain maybe how I watch boxing. Maybe I'm getting to a point where I like watching fighters who I feel like look good when they fight. Like maybe I watch boxing beyond the competition level now. Maybe I view it as like an art form because I watch a lot of boxing. And that fight to me, there wasn't like, um, it was just rugged. There wasn't that prettiness or that elegance to some fights. 
Yeah, but when but when Easter would step back and use additions and let off combinations, that shit looks like magic, man. I I, I think probably I overrate Easter a little bit, but well, I think I think Easter could be great, but I think they got to slow him down a little bit. And I know he's a world champion, but I think that they got to slow him down a little bit. But he's the most talented out of the a the A B promotions. I know, but stop Diego Corralising and fighting so much on the inside and shit. I hate when he to fucking every fight now he does that. Well, that tells you about the training. <laughs> Seems yeah. like that's where he's most comfortable and a lot of guys and then this is a general statement, but a lot of guys who fight on the inside, there's many reasons. Some are temperament. Some reasons are because you hit really hard, like a friend of the show, Willie Nelson. Willie hits tremendously hard, and you're not going to find Willie Nelson hitting people on the, from the outside. Speaking of which, Mark met Willie Nelson, and he got nervous. He's yeah, just an intimidating guy, and shit. It's just fucking... There's a lot of things go into it and shit. Like, if I, if I say this to sound... You know, you just... A, well, that was probably... Know, like, that was, like, a weird night, too, because, like, we met up with our friends at a boxing match, and, like... You probably figured out who Willie was, and we were just, like, standing in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it was, like, eight of us, and, like, you had just met them for the first time. And, like, Willie's, like, the shyest of all of them, and he's, like, famous. But, like, he's super shy, and he doesn't really like to talk. And he doesn't even really view himself as famous. And you were like, whoa, this guy's really intimidating. And it's like, no, Willie's probably just as nervous of you as you are like in the first couple of minutes, like, he was fucking talking shit about Tony Harrison, like, making fun of his name and shit. Yeah, I could tell he was pissed off. It was just like, fuck, man. <laughs> I'm going to get away from this dude. No, nah, like, it, was, it was about, well, Tony did a lot of bullshit to Willie. Willie, I don't think we'll ever completely, I probably shouldn't say, ah, whatever, but Tony Harrison said a lot of BS about Willie, where he was like, oh, I won't lose to a guy who has the name as a country singer. Oh, Willie Nelson looks like a, like, I think he called him a black redneck or something. <laughs> it was like, he said like a lot of stuff and then Willie knocked him out and it was like, oh, yeah, well, now Tony, you're, it's time for you to eat all your words. Because like he said, like, because I remember he was like leaving Instagram tags like weekly making fun of Willie. Like three more weeks till I knock you out. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Like it was just like so like I can get that one. But um yeah, Robert Easter and then the other thing about Robert Easter, it could be conditioning because sometimes guys that don't have that world class conditioning, they fight on the inside because it's out of necessity. Yeah, you can rest in there and you don't you're not using your legs at all. Yeah. But I I really like Robert Guerrero in this fight. A lot of people say Guerrero's done. I think he's just fought a lot of people that were too big for him, to be honest with you. Um, I think that this, honestly, could be a little bit of a scary fight for Robert because he could look good in this fight against Omar Figueroa and potentially get more fights, and I think that's where things could get scary. But um, Yeah, I mean... He, he's lost thought, like a he, he's lost it like a bunch of Hall of Famers. Yeah, I've always thought him versus Broner would be a really good fight. So I guess the thinking is if he beats Figueroa and Broner loses to Mikey, maybe that's the fight to make. Yeah, yeah they've had beef for years. Yeah, I mean, first I, I've heard several times the winner is going to fight Spence, but oh yikes, yikes. Well, I mean, I, I think Robert's going to win, but if that's the case, I'd rather Figueroa get the nod and then go on. But I mean, I don't know. He he, he does like good numbers when he fights. So PBC probably they probably do hope Guerrero wins. Well, I mean, Robert, like this is what annoys me about the HBO card and people saying all oh, that such. Robert Guerrero is the definition of the quote unquote fan friendly fighter. He changed his style. And moved up weight classes basically to entertain the fans. And then you get people on the internet making fun of him. Oh, he's got no power. Yeah, because I've been around Robert two weeks before a fight. And he, he's one pound away from what, making weight. Two weeks from a fight, he's one pound away from making weight. So he's fighting basically at what he works out in the gym at. 
He's just yeah, I mean, people I, off of the street. I think, like, in real life, though, we have to, like, want, like 140, 147, like, who has power? A couple of people. It's not really it's, anyone, dude. And you got, let's be honest, like, uh, again, they're going to kill me, but I don't think fucking Pacquiao has power there at either division. I think something was happening. Is for, none of them, none of these guys really do. Um, Thurman doesn't have power. I know people are going to say that's controversial. At the highest level since he's yes. gone up, he doesn't have power. That was a lie. <laughs> he, he doesn't have power. He landed a hundred times on Porter. The guys that have power in that division are Earl Spence. And that's it. That's it's Earl Spence and it Junior Welter Terrence Crawford. That's it. And that's the next big super fight in all of boxing. In the next two to three years, that's the big fight. Crawford I mean, versus Earl Spence. Maybe Danny Garcia they'll say has power, but I mean who did No one has power, man. And it's like for, it's like if you're hating on like welterweights because they don't have power, it's like you're gonna go down the list a long time before you find a guy. Broner doesn't have power at 147 if he's fighting there. I'm trying to think. Like, I and they, I think they should stop saying that too on every telecast. Like, oh, 147 is the hottest division of boxing. It's it's not anymore, man. Well, I'd say it's the most notable division. It's got Na- the most yes, notoriety. But, like, I'd say a division like 130 pounds um, is very good. 126 pounds. Those are the divisions. 154. There's, look at one fight, like, real great fight I can think of right now at 47. And it's Thurman Spence. What else? When Crawford moves up in Spence? Yeah. I think right. all the fights are with Spence. All the really good fights <laughs> yeah. are with Spence. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> like that's <laughs> that's why they call him the truth because all the good fights that you want to see at that division they go through Earl Spence. Yeah. So how do you see this fight going? Because Omar Figueroa basically has hand problems. He's even fought a boxing match in winning gloves, which is flat out bizarre. Oh, the the more padded ones, right? Yeah, they're sparring gloves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. He trained with Joel Diaz, but Joel's a great trainer. But at the same time, I think more or less why he trained with Joel Diaz was a discipline issue about making mm-hmm. weight. Yeah, right, right. More so than training because I don't know how long he's been training there, but if this is his first camp with a trainer, they're basically learning how to get along. He might teach him a thing or two, but it's really your second training camp when you start learning stuff. This is more or less a fitness camp with a new person giving you advice. But, yeah. It's, it, it, it's a tough one for me to call. I mean, maybe I'll favor Fig a little bit because he, he's a little bit younger. It hasn't been... I mean, Robert's been had a lot of punishment and stuff like the last three or four years. So that's the only reason I, I give a slight edge to Fig, but I think it's close. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Robert won and won convincingly. But I wouldn't be surprised if he's just like it's a really like back and forth fight and maybe Fig just a little bit too much for him just based on like age and freshness or whatever. Yeah. See, my thing is. It's going to be shoulder to shoulder, right? Most of the fight, I would think. We don't know. I think Robert might outbox him, to be honest with you, because the reason why I'm picking Robert and people go, because he lives two hours from your house. Well, that's not it. I'm picking Robert because I think this is the first guy where he can go back to his lightweight skill sets. Yeah, he. I for sure he can outbox him. I know that for sure. And be, up until Figueroa, he's had to go on the inside because guys, when they fully extend punches... I don't want to say they were hurting him, but he felt the power more. He had to fight on the inside to smother shots so he didn't get hit clean. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, to, yeah. Because he was the littler guy in all those fights, despite being nearly six feet tall. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen in this fight. But what I like about Robert in this fight is, despite everything he goes through, Robert doesn't mentally break. Right? Whereas... 
Figueroa, and he's a very nice person. He's come on this podcast. He's missed weight a couple of times now. Yeah, yeah. And I know Robert, until the lights go out, he's not going to stop fighting. And in a fight where I think they're pretty evenly matched, I'm going to favor the guy that doesn't break. Yeah, that's fair. So I, I, I can't call it. I think it's really close, man. I'm not big on Figueroa. And I know at the top of his talent, Guerrero was a lot better than Figueroa. So if he, if he can get close to back there, then I would – I ah, man, it's, that's, a, that's tough. That's a good matchup, man. Yeah. Well, anything else you want to talk I about? I wanted to ask you I wanted to ask you one thing before I got off. Yeah. I'm not talking about uh like who had more who has more heart, who's a bigger puncher, who you'd re- just pure boxing. Who who do you think is better, Ray Leonard or Floyd? Just boxing. This is going to make people mad, man. See, I, I, I grew up under my grandpa. My grandpa was a Ray Leonard hater because he grew up around Sugar Ray Robinson. And he didn't like that he took the sugar. So, I like Ray Leonard, but I, I've i had to reappreciate him as an adult. Because I grew, up, I grew up looking at him. But i I got to answer this question by answering it the way I have to. I grew up looking at Ray Leonard, looking at someone I looked up to as one of the coolest people in my life telling me Ray Leonard wasn't that cool because he stole another person's name. So just based off my perception of the world, I got to go with Floyd. And I'm not saying if they fought each other, who would win? Just who's like, um, because I had an argument today about someone saying, and they're, they're admitting, I don't know, Floyd might be a better boxer than Ray Leonard. And then the next sentence they say, well, I would pick, I'd pick Duran over Floyd. Yeah, but Leonard showed out how easy you could outbox Duran. The thing about the thing about Duran, like I can get where they're saying is, I've always said the hardest fight for Floyd would have been Vernon Forrest or James Kirkland. And the reason I say that is, if you can't knock those guys out or do something, they would have been tricky. And I see a little bit of Duran in that um, Kirkland theory, but I think that Duran's too small for Floyd. I think he would have been too little. As weird as that sounds to say that Kirkland could I, present more problems than Duran, but I really do. I went, I went back and watched the the. He, he, he was really badly and really easily outboxed by Leonard. I don't think Ray Leonard's a better boxer than than Mayweather. Yeah. I think if they if they fought each other, I'm not saying who would win, Mayweather or Leonard. I, that's not the, my opinion. Just boxing, I think Floyd's better. So I I couldn't see how Duran could beat him. Well, I think the the thing about Duran is. It was never boxing with him. It was he basically tried to emotionally get you into a fight. Yeah. And once yeah. you got into a fight, you're kind of screwed, right? Sure, sure. So when you're dealing with someone like that, Floyd naturally boxes people and he's the best at that. But when you fight a guy like that, you never know if he says like a racial slur, if he steps on your toe, if he hits you low, if he yeah. hits you in the gut. You never know if... You react emotional at one point. He's just gonna go, "Oh, great, I got him," and that's like the that's what makes where I think people can say like, "Oh, he would have had a chance." He would have because Duran's a wild man. You know, he's a guy who went in to box people and he didn't care about the consequences to his own body. He could have died when he boxed and he didn't care. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying, but just actually, just a couple hours before I got on with you, I got an argument, so I just wanted to see if if I was a psycho. I, I truly believe James Kirkland would have been a really hard fight for Floyd. And I know that sounds so goofy, but I think he would have been one of the hardest ones ever. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see what you're saying. I, I don't think you're saying he beats him, right? It's just Floyd's going to have to dig, dig a little bit. I think it could have looked like the game, or the, uh, what's his name? Maidana fight. It could yeah, have looked yeah. like that. It, because it's like Kirkland. If you can't yeah, if you really can't knock him out. Yeah, if you can't really, really make him stop coming, then... Because I just see, like, that fight, because Floyd would be moving and he'd be thinking, like, what the hell? (laughs) Why does this guy just keep coming with a high guard? And if he got him on the ropes, he just would keep working, even when Floyd would be trying to throw the elbows and the shield. Kirkland's crazy. Like, he would have just kept working. The only thing I'll say is he can be knocked out by anyone. Yeah, but that's the beauty of the fight. Like... That's why I think Kirkland fights in his prime were the best. He could get knocked out in one round, or it could get crazy. 
no matter what, Luki, even I had to end when I knew he was finished and he saw, I'd still, when I would watch him fight, be thinking like, fuck, man, <laughs> he, he might be able to beat Canelo. I don't know why. He sucks. I, he sucks to me. He's terrible. But for some reason, he, I think it's because of what you're saying. Like, yeah, it's, I don't know, man. I just get a weird feeling. There's something magical like, about him. To me, yeah. if I was a Hall of Fame voter, I'd vote Kirkland into the Hall of Fame. Because to me, the Hall of Fame in boxing is about interesting people. It's about lineage of people who should be remembered. And to me, James Kirkland's someone that should be remembered because when Kirkland fought Angulo, it was like in Tijuana or somewhere crazy. Yeah. And it was like, that was the craziest. If you want to talk about a fight that was like just people punching each other, that was crazy. They both dropped each other in the first round. (laughs) Do you remember that fight? Yeah. Yeah. It was a week before uh, a big fight. Yeah, I just it was. It was a week a week before I think Marquez Pacquiao. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you remember they, they when they were doing like the Marquez Pacquiao twenty four seven Bearstein trained fucking uh, uh, Angulo, oh. and then they they showed on twenty four seven him come in after the after the fight and Marquez was like, "What happened?" He was like, he "Fucking threw a trillion punches in the first round. He couldn't move anymore. Punched himself out." <laughs> Yeah, I mean, to me, Kirkland is one of these characters that you only find in boxing where it's like people try to get a right read. Like, the best matchmakers in boxing are top rank, right? Even they got Kirkland wrong. They brought him in to fight Glenn Tapia, and he knocks out Glenn Tapia. Yeah. Like, the best people in the business can't even read him. Yeah, and I remember thinking, like, he should get beat, like outclassed by Cotto, but if he can just nonstop come, like I know he had like the shit in his gloves, but if he can just nonstop come like Margarito did, like I don't know, maybe he can break him. I was kind of interested to see it. I didn't think it was by any means like a a legitimate fight, but for some reason, I'd still much rather see that than fucking uh, it's the fucking guy who beat fucking Soto Cross twice. What the fuck is his name? Who Cotto's fighting? Who the hell is Cotto fighting? What the fuck? Why? Calm a guy. Calm a guy. Calm a guy. Where is that fight, by the way? Uh, it's by your place. I would send you to the fight, but it's the same night as a Floyd fight. Oh, I said StubHub? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know it was on the same night. Same exact night. I'm gonna, I was going to send you a thing. I'm going to try to get out there on the 16th Oxnard to that Mikey Garcia thing. The open workout. Oh, no shit. Dope. Yeah. I'm going to see if we have usually have stuff scheduled around that area. I'm going to try to schedule my work day for that day so I can smash out there and do my work before and after. Cool. Cool. Well, um, that's the best guy, bro. If you want to get interviews, that's the guy. Oh, yeah. No, Mikey's friend of the show, Mikey Garcia. I actually got to interview Mikey this week. Those are the guys. Him and his brother. Those are the guys, man. They're so nice. Why does like Mikey? Because it'd be like, hey, man. He acts like he's like, he doesn't even care. He's very, um, he understands what it's like to have a job and he doesn't view himself as larger than any other person. I love how he, he talks, he's always so calm and like well-spoken and like you don't even notice that he just threw a jab at a fight. I love it. Like when I talked to him about Lomachenko, he's like, awesome performance, great fighter. You, you know, if you don't do that uh, with an opponent like that, then you're not very good, but like you don't notice it <laughs> you know what I mean? it's just i don't know i like the way he does i've heard him do it several times but i mean like he's saying like he's saying real stuff too yeah but because he's not saying like oh, shit you're supposed to fucking knock out guys like that like you just don't catch it right away no i i hear you man but uh anything else we went long for this pod but i think people are gonna love it yeah, man. Big, good weekend of fights. There's also, like, Chris Eubank, Arthur Abraham. There's a lot of good shit, man. So this is a big weekend coming up. Okay. Well, talk to you soon. All right, brother.